right, let's begin the next one. You are halfway to an in your nursing colleague wants to learn about ECG. Talk to her about ECG, right? So it's ECG teaching. See, when you're teaching to a student, which is nursing staff, obviously I'm not gonna go into much of detailing. Uh, the thing is, it's not an easy task to teach ECG to someone in eight minutes. You can't go in detailing, right? So you have to be very basic when you're teaching ECG, right? Uh, I'll tell you there are six steps. Just make sure you have covered those six steps and uh, that's it. ECG, so again, what you're gonna do, you're gonna do the wrapper building. Uh, Hi Alex, uh, how are you? How the shift's going on? I'm Ankur, one of the doctors. Uh, uh, how the shift going on? Are you enjoying working in any? All those things. Then uh, I can see that you want my help in ECG. Yes, doctor. Okay, fine. Before we start, do you have any idea about ECG? Doctor, I don't have any idea about ECG. Okay, that's absolutely okay. And I'll try my best to teach you. Is there anything in particular you want me to teach? No, I want you to teach uh, everything about the basics. Okay, fine, fair enough. And I'll try my best to teach that. And uh, so any idea why we do ECG? Uh, yeah, doctor, yes. I mean, if somebody's coming to us with chest pain with the shortness of breath and uh, uh, then in those cases, we can do ECG. That's exactly the right answer. Yes, yes. If somebody's coming to us with chest pain with... Uh, uh, shortness of breath and uh, heart racing. So in those cases, yes, we can go ahead and do ECG. So it will tell us a bit about EC. It will tell us about the status of the heart. So where exactly the problem is, yeah? So in heart, what happens? We have got four chambers. We have got two upper, two bottom chambers, yeah? We say atria and ventricles. So the, how the blood, the blood, the, all the blood, deoxygenated blood is gonna go to the right atrium, then gonna go to the right ventricle, and then it's gonna go to the lungs. Then it's gonna be purified and it's gonna come to the left atrium, then it's gonna go to the left ventricle, and then through aorta, it's gonna go through the whole body. So brief explanation that we can do. If they know about it, it's okay. If they don't know, just do a bit of uh, uh, teaching. Right. Now, they will be having the ECGs as well. Some ECGs that you might see in the cubicle. So you can take one of it. So that's going to be easy for you to explain as well. So what else What else you have got? First, you have got the P wave. This P, U, R, S, T. This is how it is. So what is this P wave? P wave is atrial depolarization. It is for atrium contraction. So when atria is going to contract, so you'll have this P wave. Easy. What is this PR interval? So PR interval is from where to where? It's starting from the P wave and then it is going to be till this point. So the time taken from the electrical activity. So it's from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. That's your PR interval, right? And it should not be more than 0 0.1 to 0 0.0, 0 0.2 seconds. So it should be less than 0.2 two seconds. We'll come to it. So what is P wave? P wave is atrial contraction. What is this QRS complex for? QRS complex is for ventricular contraction. What is this T wave for? T wave is ventricular relaxation. Ventricular repolarization. Relaxation. Doctor, then where is the wave for atrial relaxation? Hmm, good question. The thing is, atrial contraction wave, you may not be able to see because it is somehow lost in the QRS complex itself. Ah, okay, that makes sense, right? So P wave, atrial contraction. QRS is your ventricular contraction. P is your ventricular relaxation. So that's why, that's how you have got these waves. Right? And then you know where is your ST segment, so you can explain that as well. Fine. Now, uh, ECG that runs on a uh, 25 mm per second uh, is the speed. Now, uh, how to check the rate, for example. So what happened is, um, it is 20, 25 mm per second. Okay. So if you see, we have got these, this is a big box and in one big box you will see there are small small boxes as well right that's how it is so what happen is when you're checking the heart rate how the heart rate is calculated you have to see if heart rate if it is regular or if it is irregular right so if it is regular let's go about that Mm, the first thing is you have to do one thing. You have to divide 300 
by the number of big boxes we have got between two RR intervals. Now from where this 300 number came? So uh, ECG, the, the speed is when you're going for a one big box, it takes 0.2 second. For one small box, it's going to take 0 0.04 second. 0.2 second for one big box. So one second, how many square? Can I say five big boxes? So we have got 60 seconds in one minute. So it is going to be 300 big boxes. So that's why you have got this 300 number. And what you're going to do, you're going to check this RR interval and see how many big boxes are there. So if I see in this one, two, three, four. So 300 divided by four, 75. That's your heart rate. That's how you check it. Now, if the pulse is irregular, if the pulse is irregular, then how I'm going to check? Because when I'm checking, if it is irregular, here we might have RR interval. We have got only two big boxes. Then I'm going to go to the next one. There you might have four boxes. There you might have six boxes. Then how the heart rate is going to be calculated? Easy way is get 30 big boxes and count. First of all, let's count 30 big boxes. Let's start from here. So one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventy, eighty, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. So these are my 30 boxes, fine. In 30 boxes, just check how many QRS complexes you have got. Let's see, you've got one, I've got two, I've got three, I've got four, I've got five, I've got six, I've got uh, seven, I've got eight roughly. So what is the heart rate? This eight multiplied by 10. So the heart rate is roughly 80 beats per minute. That's how you can check. So now you understood if your heart rate is regular, how to check the heart rate. If the heart rate is the heart, uh, it's a it's irregularly irregular heart rate, then how to check the heart rate. Yeah. So that's how it is, it is done, right? Okay, so what we have covered that P wave is for what? QRS is complex is for what? T wave is for what? Right? And then you explained about how to check the heart rate if it is regular and if it is irregular. Yeah, got it? Now, in the end, make sure you cover these six points. Make sure each P wave should be followed by QRS complex. That's the main thing. Each P wave should be followed by a QRS complex. Yeah. PR interval should be less than 0.2 seconds. That's what we discussed. PR interval should be less than 0.2 seconds. If it is more than that, you might be dealing with a case which is a heart block. Yeah. QRS should be less than 0.12 seconds. The QRS complex should be less than 0.12 seconds. If it is more than that, you might be dealing with a scenario bundle branch block. You might be dealing with a scenario of ventricular tachycardia. Right. QRS complex should be equidistant apart. If they are not equidistant, then your pulse is not regular. It is going to be irregular, obviously. Then T wave should be upright and round, understood. And the rate should be 60 to 100. If it is less than 60, you have got bradycardia. If it is more than 100, you are dealing with a tachycardia case. That's it. So if you're able to teach this much, that's enough. Now in the exam, don't go, na, don't go into what is left bundle branch flow, right bundle branch flow, this and that. Don't go into too much of detail. You're teaching to nursing staff and going that much of detail is not going to work. And they might be showing you some ECGs as well. And you can pick one of it and then explain a bit more. Let me show you some. And I want you to tell me what you think is the abnormality in this. What is the abnormality in this particular ECG? what is happening in this particular ECG. So if you see in this, what's happening to your QRS complexes? 
what is happening to your QRS complexes? Is it less than 0.12? No, it's more than that. So it is a station. It is an ECG of ventricular tachycardia. Yeah, can we say it's wide QRS complexes? What's happening here, guys? What's happening in this one? What's happening to your uh, ST segment? It is, it is ST elevation, right? It's an ST elevation MI. What's happening here? So that's your uh, QRS complex, uh, yeah? That's your QRS complex. But if I see, where is the P wave? And that's your T, but then P wave is missing. Problem is with the atria. Atrium is not contracting. That's why I don't have P wave. It is a atrial fibrillation. Yeah. Okay. What about this one? What about this one? So here you see how the pulse is coming and you have got this sore tooth appearance as well. What is it? Can we say this is atrial flutter? Yes, it is. Yeah. So, I mean, just remember these four ECGs and just remember these six points. Just remember how to check the rate, if it is regular or if it is irregular. Just remember what is P wave, what is PR interval, what is QRS complex, what is ST segment and what is T wave. That's it. So what is P wave for? What is QRS complex is for? What is T wave is for? That's it. So you're checking the, I mean, assessing their knowledge, how much they want to know. Is there anything in particular they want to learn? Just give them a brief idea about the how the heart working, four chambers and all, and then explain about these uh, waves. And then you check, uh, explain it to them how you can check for the rate as well, irregular or regular ECG. And then you explain about these six steps and that's it. And that's how you can finish your ECG. All right.